Well, this version of Adam God, I'm going to kind of focus on King Follett and how King Follett is directly related to Adam God. So we'll look at subjects like God was once a man like us. The Father of us all dwelt on an earth the same as Jesus Christ himself did. You have got to learn to be gods. The plurality of gods. Was there ever a father without first being a son? When you see phrases like, but to us, there is but one God. Mormonism is polytheistic. The world, the universe, is full of gods. Mormons worship one of those gods. An abundance of evidence yet remains to confirm that Adam, God, was taught and believed by the prophets of this dispensation. But first let us disperse with another erroneous opinion that the historic discourse delivered April 9, 1852 was an isolated incident which finds no support from later teachings of Brigham Young. Quite to the contrary, Brigham expounded and elaborated upon the doctrine of Adam God for over 25 years until his death on August 29, 1877. His contemporaries taught Adam God and left their testimonies affirming the authenticity of the doctrine. Wilfred Woodruff. President Young preached to the congregation of several thousand out of doors and I believe that he preached the greatest sermon that was ever delivered to the Latter-day Saints since they have been a people. This is a powerful claim by Wilfred Woodruff to say that he believed Brigham preached the greatest sermon and the phrase as man now is, God once was. As God now is, man may be. This has in it implicitly the idea of Adam God, and that's why it's being used here to prove Adam God in the King Follett Discourse. Adam is a God. He's the progenitor of the human race. So there's no contradiction in saying, Adam, God. Adam had a father, and Adam's God had a father. This is why Adam is called the God of this world. From King Follett, God himself was once as we are now, and is an exalted man, and sits enthroned in yonder heavens. This is the great secret. If the veil were rent today, and the great God who holds this world in its orbit, and who upholds all worlds and all things by his power, was to make himself visible, I say if you were to see him today, you would see him like a man in form, like yourselves in all the person, image, and very form as a man. For Adam was created in the very fashion, image, and likeness of God, and received instructions from, and walked and talked, and conversed with him, as one man talks and communes with another. And the head, one of the gods, brought forth the gods. That is the true meaning of the words in Genesis. If you do not believe it, you do not believe the learned man of God. Learned men can teach you no more than what I have told you. Thus the head God brought forth the gods in the Grand Council. We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. These are incomprehensible ideas to some, but they are simple. It is the first principle of the Gospel to know for a certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with Him as a man converses with another and that he was made a man like us. Yea, that God himself, the Father of us all, dwelt on the earth the same as Jesus Christ did. If you can't see that Adam is God, that this God of Adam was like Adam was once in some eons past, if you can't see that Adam is a God for the Mormon, then you're in a form of denial. One of the major tenets of Mormonism is to be exalted as a god. Adam became a god. 
a Mormon may become an exalted man, may become a god. If a Mormon man can become a god, why can't Adam be a god? This is just one example of why someone like Brigham would say that Adam is our only god, and the only one that we have anything to do with. And again, Joseph taught, Here then is eternal life, to know the only wise and true God. For you have got to learn how to be gods yourselves and to be kings and priests to God, the same as all gods have done before you, namely by going from one small degree to another and from a small capacity to a great one, from grace to grace, from exaltation to exaltation, until you attain to the resurrection of the dead. Oh boy. And are able to dwell in everlasting burnings, and to sit in glory, as do all those who sit in throne in everlasting power. The head God organized the heaven and the earth. I defy all the world to refute me. In the beginning the heads of the gods organized the heavens and the earth. Now the learned priests and the people rage, and the heathen imagine a vain thing. So in Mormonism it's established that Adam is a god, that his father was just a god with a small g, that was once a man and became a god through perfected works. Adam became perfected and became a god. It's one of the major tenets of Mormonism that you become gods. Mormon male through exaltation becomes a god is given a planetary system to populate. This is what happened with Adam. This is what Mormons strive to obtain. Godhood. This is why Adam is the god of this world. Adam is the first man and he populated this world. Thus Adam is the god of this world. Even if we revert to Adam's God as being the God of this world, you're essentially saying the same thing. You're just leaving Adam's name out of it. 